Okay. Okay. So um, welcome to the second part of today. Uh, as in the last uh, Thursday, we're going to, to to see how to make some practical application in Python. In this case, uh, the goal of today is to exploit uh, part of the rest uh, things we learned in the last week, especially on uh, on the client side, actually, uh, to try to control uh, a U bulb, which is here. Okay. And the idea is to to write. Um, Okay, let me, is to first create a REST client for interacting with the lamp, and then to, to write two different scripts, one just for checking that uh, the, the REST communication works, uh, and uh, which basically asks uh, to all the lamps connected to the U-bridge, uh, which is there, um, to start up uh, a color loop sequence and keep it uh, on for 20 seconds. This is our first up. And the second will be uh, a seminal implementation of uh, a bridge API in Python, with which uh, we, in the end, try to uh, uh, get access to the control of the U of the lamp, the U color of the lamp. So the color U, what is the color U? It's the, basically, let's say the color of the lamp. So we change the color of the lamp using this API that we built together, okay? So just to give you an idea of what we are expected to do, let me ask ops. Okay, this is. We were already seeing it, but just one moment. First, okay, this is the first script. So we want to light up the lamp <coughs> and make the lamp uh, starting to make a color loop. So you see that it's changing colors continuously. And this lasts for 20 seconds. After 20 seconds, we want to switch off the lamp by sending Python and REST com by writing a Python program that sends REST commands to the API offered by the U bridge. Okay, so okay, this is the general goal. You have the solution on uh, on GitHub since Monday, so you should uh, be able to access the solution. In case the solution is not accessible, like the the solution before, please send me an email. Don't wait for the next lab for for telling me that the, the solution is not accessible. Okay. Um, okay. So let's start. First, let's let's try to have a look uh, um, to to understand what we need to do. First, we need to we don't know anything about the APIs offered by the UBridge, but uh, we are going to to at least get a little bit of information about it. Uh, but the idea is that we need to accomplish two main steps. The first one is to prepare or create a client for able to send REST commands over HTTP. So basically, we need to create a Python program who is able to mimic somewhat what the browser does when uh, sends a request for a page. So sending, get, put, post requests to a given endpoint. Second step would be to create a, another script which uses this base function for sending the right commands to the bridge. So we split the, the actions in two. One is uh, providing a general purpose uh, REST client that we can use also in future. And the other is to write a specific script for controlling the lamp without caring on the REST communication because it's already done in the first script, okay? So let's try to write the first uh, REST script. To do that, what we need to do is to basically send a get or post or put a request over HTTP. So we need a library which is able to, to work like, uh, like a browser do, okay? This library in Python is named a module, and it's the URL lib module. And as the name says, this URL lib is, uh, provides operation which have to do to, uh, with the URL handling and sending data over HTTP, basically. So since we need that module, we need to type import. 
and then yearly two. And since we know that every REST communication more or less implies transfer or JSON data, either because we, we receive JSON data as a reply to our request or because we want to send some JSON data to control something, we will need also a library for handling the JSON data. And this is called JSON, okay? So whenever you need a new library, first thing is to go to the Python website and check for which library, which module is available for handling that kind of information. So I'm, I'm just telling you already the result, but the process is just go there and find what are the modules available. Okay, so now that we got these two imports, uh, we need to define a way for sending a command. So this is a function, basically. Just a simple function. If we are uh, good enough at programming, we should be able to generate something which is general. Because actually what we want to do is just to send data over different HTTP verbs. So my idea in designing this function would be to generate something which is so general that I can tell to the function, okay, I want to use the get method or the post method. I want to send this payload to this URL and that's all. Should take care of anything else. So for doing that, uh, first we need to define the name of the function, then what are the parameters? We already said what parameters we like. Method, payload, and URL. Um, and then we need to implement the logic behind it. So the function might be send, for example, because we want to send data. So send. Then we want to define a, the method to use, so we're not using a parameter named method. And we can also specify a default for this. By default, we will send get requests, like a browser. This is a choice, a design choice. We can also send post request, of course. Then, second parameter, or third, depending, we need to enter the payload and the URL. The order uh, doesn't matter, actually, so as we want. Just to be coherent with the solution we have, let, let's use URL first, but it's the same. So URL, and the default is none, okay? So I, I could try to send a request without providing a URL, but that will cause an error, probably. Secondly, the data I want to send, also this one with a default of none. And finally, this is the, the, the least information we need to, to send data. But every REST API usually requires the client to specify the content type of the data which is passed between the client and the server. So the client should declare, okay, the payload I'm going to send you is JSON, for example, or is XML, or is whatever. So what we need here is a, an additional parameter, which is the header parameter, that permits to the calling application to set up specific HTTP headers inside the request. For example, the content type, saying we want to send JSON instead or, or whatever. Or, for example, for specifying authentication parameter. I want to send JSON and my username is. This is going to uh, be inserted in the request headers. So we can provide a place for the headers. We call it headers. Okay, and this initially might be empty. So what's the difference between this one and the others is that this one is a dictionary, an empty dictionary. Okay, open brace, close brace. Okay, then what happens when I send a request? What do you expect to receive back? A response. Okay, I'm asking for something and I get back a response. It will be either just okay, done, or if I'm asking for information, some content, some payload. So the first thing to do is to handle and prepare variables for handling the response, okay? And to do that, we can prepare a dictionary for holding the response result. So, we can 
prepare here response dictionary equal to date. It's another way of preparing a dictionary. Okay. So let's comment this. I changed also the, could you see or should I enlarge the font? It's better if I enlarge the font. Yes. Sorry, I forgot at the beginning. Um, let me just. Okay, is it readable now? Yes. Okay. Yes. Nothing. 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 Both, both generate an empty dictionary. It's the same. Just to see another way for doing the same type of stuff. Um, okay. Let me type here a method, uh, uh, a comment like uh, prepare for the uh, the response. Dictionary, empty, okay. So, okay, after we prepare the, the, the container for the response, what we need to do is to start checking the parameters. Start to check if we have all the information we need to send the request. Otherwise, we will throw up an error, basically. First information to check, the URL. If we don't know the URL, we are not able to send any request, okay? So, check if URL exists and is not empty. So here we will type probably something like if URL different from known which means that someone from, which is called in the, the function, has provided a URL parameter. And actually, if we want also to check that it's not empty, we could also add something like, uh, and URL is different from like this, or len of URL is greater than zero, okay? These are just checks that we may have. But let's keep it simple. Let, let's assume that people calling our function are uh, good enough to write something if they, they provide a parameter. Okay? Done. Uh, if the URL is okay, we can build, start building the request we want to send to the given URL. To build the request, what we need is to prepare a request object, which is provided by the URL lib library. Afterwards, we will need to set the URL to which the request should be sent and the method to use, either get, put, or whatever. In our case, the default is get. So if no parameter is provided, will be get. Okay. If I'm going too fast, so you have doubts, just tell me and ask without any problems. So let, let's build the request. And we could say that the request is URL lib2 dot request. And the request will be for the given URL with the given data with the given headers. Okay, so actually here I was a little bit cheating because I already uh, know the type of the parameters needed by the request and that's why I used a dictionary for headers and that's why I'm expecting a dictionary for the data, basically. Second, we need to set up the method. This is a little bit tricky, actually, but it can be done. By default, the request object of the URL lib uses a get method as a default. If we want to change it, we need to uh, use a 
particular Python construct which is named the lambda expression that basically defines a kind of callback for, uh, for the method. And what we are going to do is to basically redefine the, the, some of the internal methods that get be called by, by the request for sending the data. And we are just changing the request object to, to make it uh, issue a different uh, verb when, when executing the request, okay? So, uh, let's type here, set the uh, request method as a comment. And here we need to build this request uh, dot get method. Okay, but we delete this and we type lambda. Here we are basically redefining the get method method, so the get method function, for calling a different method inside the, the request library. So usually it calls the get one, but if we type put inside the, the method variable, then the library when sending the request will call the put method. That's what we are doing with this really tricky uh, line. Lambda is a particular operator in Python which is used for several things. It's quite complex to explain, actually. Uh, but the main uh, types of adoption are either for defining callbacks or for redefining some function. Here you see get method is a function because if I type uh, request dot get method, you see here this is a function, okay? But if I take the function name without the parentheses, actually I get the pointer to the function and I can redefine some of the parameters. So it's something really complex, complex uh, really inside of the Python language, which uh, basically we are not going to explain in the course, so just take it as is and it works. <laughs> and if you want to have more details, just search for lambda expressions, Python, and you can find many, many tutorials on that. Yeah, exactly. The idea is that usually the request is based on get, but since we are going to send the requests also on using post and put mainly, uh, we need a way for doing that. And the way uh, in the URL library is to redefine the get method so that it points no more to the get, the actual get implementation, but to the put implementation or to the post implementation. There are simpler ways to do that. Um, don't think so. <laughs> Maybe you can find. <laughs> this is quite easier, um, quite short also. I'd like to understand what Exactly, for understanding it, uh, since we don't have time, <laughs> basically look at the tutorial. It's quite clear, yeah. The, many tutorials are available, they are quite clear, they are quite wide because the lambda operator can be used in a very big variety of conditions. So that's why we decided to, okay, Take it by faith and, <laughs> and use it. Okay, um, given this, we should be able to now send the request. We prepare the request, we change the method as we want, so what we need to do now is to just send. And to send it, let's try to prepare a result holder for the request, so uh, prepare the Result holder, and we call it a result, so equal to none at the beginning. And then let's send a request, but when we send a request over HTTP, many things can occur which prevent the request to be executed. For example, we don't have the network connection, or there is a long latency in the connection, so the connection times out and so on and so on. So it's quite clear to understand that sending a request over HTTP might generate errors, which are unexpected uh, at the programming time. So we need to handle runtime exceptions. And we learned uh, basically last week that for handling runtime exception, we need to use the try uh, accept 
constructor. So here, we have try, that means, okay, this section might generate a runtime errors, and this should be closed at the end by an accept uh, part. Okay, what, what do we try? To send the request, so get the request result. Okay, and to send a request, we just need to use the function URL open. So open the connection over the URL given the request. So result will be equal to URL to dot URL open. Too many parameters, we just want to send the request. Okay. What happens if we have some error? Except. Which accept, which error are we expecting? Um, the error we can get are defined in the URL class error. Oh, sorry, URL. Okay, this one. and the error will be put in the E variable. So now we can just print the error. Don't, we don't do anything more, but just print the error. Sorry. Okay. Um, so print E dot reason. Okay, and that's it. So what happens if a runtime error occurs? We just write on the console what's the reason so that we can somewhat debug the problem. Then, we don't have any error. We assume the result is there. Let's check if it's not empty. So if result is different from None. Okay, what we need to do with the result? We need to take the result, decode the payload, and place the payload in the response dictionary, okay? So, decode the result, and um, to decode the result, we can first use a variable and call it a result uh, as a string, okay? Or let, let's make it shorter so that it stays on a string. And this will be the result. Result is a file, basically. So the URL lib open provides a kind of file back. So what we need to do is to read the file. So this will be read, okay? And convert the file into a string. Decode, um, this will be UTF-8, okay? So what we are doing with the string is to get the let's say file, the, the, the stream coming out from the, uh, the request we sent, reading the stream, reading all the bytes inside, decoding these bytes as UTF-8 characters, and placing the result into the result as string. So what we get in the end is the string representing the body of the response that we received over HTTP. What is inside the string? Don't know. Might be a JSON body, if it's a REST API, might be an error, 404 not found, okay? This is a string. Now that we got this string, we could check that it's not empty, because we could also get an empty string if the service on the other side is just providing nothing back. And if it's not empty, 
we assume that it's a JSON content, so this is a kind of a risky assumption. We may encounter errors, but let's simplify. And assuming that uh, a JSON content, we want to decode this JSON content and place it into a dictionary. So that in the end, we have a, a field Python dictionary with the data provided back from the service. To do that, we first check that the result is not empty. So if the result as string, in this case, is different from the empty string, okay? If it's different from the empty string, let's decode it from plain string to dictionary using the JSON library we imported at the beginning. So we can type here response dictionary equal to JSON dot load s result a string. Okay, load s means load string. Okay. JSON is the JSON library that takes a string and convert it, interprets the string as a JSON file, as a JSON content, and converts this JSON content into a dictionary. Okay. Finally, we got everything. So what we can do now is to just return back the dictionary. Okay, so let's go actually, oh, let me, okay, we could also return it uh, in any case, so return response dictionary, okay? So we prepared a generic function that given the method, given the URL, given any optional payload and any optional header, sends a request over HTTP, gets the result, and provides the result back as a dictionary. Okay? Okay, let's save this. Now, let's create a new module for testing our function. So we call this U. Okay, we need the main function for running the script from the console. We call in the main uh, uh, main function. Here we can define main. Okay, then since we wrote the send function in the rest module, we need to import the rest module here. Is it import? In, yeah, let me check. From, okay. Okay, then. Let's try to send a simple get to the U-bridge. Okay, very simple, very hard-coded, then we are going to change it. But just to check that we can send the request and get back this request. So se let's send the request and print on the console the, the result of the request. So here what we need to do is to take rest.send method, get its default, but if we want to put it, we can type here, get, okay? Then, URL. Okay, let's record the URL here, and then I would explain something about the API, but now I just give you the, the final URL. And this will be HTTP 192.168.1.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
and the resource we want to get information about that it's lights. This provides me all inf the information about all lights connected to the bridge. Okay. Okay, let me check. Okay, I close this data. Well, do we need to send any data? No. Okay, so no data, no header. That's it. What if we want to also avoid using the method get? We can do this. Okay. This URL equal means the value the, of the parameter we are providing is for the URL parameter. So whenever in a function call you see name equal value, means that the value should be assigned to the parameter named after the name, okay? Okay. We send a requ this request and what we get back is hopefully a dictionary that we can save, for example, in a dictionary object. Let's call it all lights. Okay. And then we can try to print it. And cross the finger. Okay. So. Now, this is, seems to be syntactically correct. Let's try to execute this as Python run. Works. Okay? You see here, this is the dictionary we get back. So actually, what we have done now is to send a GET request to a real server, which is that you bridge, okay? Which provides us back a response in JSON that describes the set of resources named lights. In this case, the lights collection. You remember that usually a resource name, which is plural, identifies a collection, like the tracks we had in the REST music server, okay? So to have a better idea of what the light uh, content is, let's get our browser back. We did it here. Okay, this is just the same request you see, and the, on the URL the same request we, we performed from Python, but this, now I'm performing the get request from the browser, and I'm exploiting a plugin in the browser to render a little bit better the JSON content, okay? And what we see here is a, a JSON content, which is basically a sequence of objects with different keys, one, two, three, okay. And what are these objects? These objects are, are representing the lamps connected to the bridge, okay. And for every lamp, some information is provided. In particular, we have state information that describes in which state the lamp is. And in particular, in this case, on equal to false means that the lamp is off, okay. So the status of the lamp named on is false. If we want to turn it on, we probably need to set the state of the lamp, in particular the on part of the state of the lamp to true, okay? This bright, it's a, an abbreviation for brightness, zero, because it's off. U, so the color of the lamp, and saturation. The combination of U and saturation provides the actual color. Saturation is the intensity of the uh, primary color, let's say, while the U defines the primary color be applied, more or less. So if the primary color is green, then it might be uh, saturated at zero, that means gray, or saturated at maximum, that means white, and in between it's a different uh, degree of green, okay, basically. Um, XY is another color space, so it's another way for specifying the color. Color temperature, 
Another way for specifying the color, you, you remember that the color temperature is, uh, the, the temperature of the color respect to the, to the sun light temperature, which is around 6,300 Kelvin, okay? So this defines uh, the temperature as high, as the temperature as warm is the light, as cold is the temperature as colder is the light, okay? Okay, then no alerts for this lamp. The effect currently set on the lamp is color loop, the one we saw before, you remember? The color mode is U and saturation, HS. So the parameter that we need to use to set up the color are U and saturation, all the others are ignored. Reachable, false. That means that this lamp is not connected to the bridge. So lamp one will not be reachable by this bridge because actually it's in my lab. Okay, so it is not reachable. Lamp two, you see here, still off because the on state is false, but now it has some brightness, hue and saturation value. So this was the lamp I was controlling before. This is the last brightness, hue and saturation value I set up. You see here brightness is 254. U, the U value actually are defined on the description of the API. So if you go to onto the meetu.com site and look for developers, then there there will be the description of the APIs. Okay, so go there and have a look. I'm not showing it because I need to be connected to that Wi-Fi for controlling the lab, so I can share two, two different Wi-Fi connections at the same time. But if you go to, go to meetyou.com and search for the developer section, you will find the documentation of the API, okay? Which describes all these parameters. And in particular, this value ranges between something like 25,000, uh, I have written it, let, let me check, it's uh, between 25,500, which means green, and 65,535, uh, that means red, okay? That, that's the range for the U. So this, this uh, 56,000 uh, and, and something means reddish somewhat, okay? Um, then, X, Y are just the conversion of, the, of these parameters in the other uh, color space. Alert known, effect known. This is turned off, no effect. Uh, set up for the lamp. Color mode, use saturation, reachable, true. True means that the lamp is connected to the bridge so I can control the lamp. Okay, and since it's, it is connected, more information is available. So the, this lamp is actually an, an extended color light according to the Philips uh, categorization. The model name is this, this one, the unique ID is this this other one, which is pretty similar to the MAC address. There is a software version, because that lamp actually has a, some chip on board with the software version, so. <laughs> and, and some other information. The last one is not connected, okay? False. But I've connected that lamp at least once, so on the bridge there is still the information about the, let's say, hardware part of the lamp. Okay, so this is what the, the, the bridge provides us when we, ask, when we ask for light collection, okay? Now, the next step of today would be to get this information and try to turn on all the lamps connected to the bridge, actually just one, but if we had all the lamps, they would all be turned on, and set on all the lamps the color loop effect, okay? And to do that, we can imagine that um, we need to set up this state value from on equal to false to on equal to true, and this effect value from none to color loop. Okay? Sounds good? Could we try it? Okay. So, starting from here. Let's take this big URL and split it in the, in the important parts. First, which is the base URL? So the base uh, 
point at which we start accessing the APIs, the root part of the URL. Let's split it, and it is this one, okay? So this is the root. Let's type here the base URL. Okay, I just moved the base URL apart. Then, the username, because I told you Python uses the username. Actually, for accessing the APIs on the U-Bridge, the documentation says that you need to register a username with a given procedure. I already done it, and every time I want to send a request to the bridge and get the request accepted, I need to append the username to the URL. It's really strange, it's really clear, but it's a design choice, not, not our design choice, basically. So we can type here username equal to Okay, so that if we get another breach, we just need to change that variable and everything should work. Yes, tell me. No, for the bridge. It's for the bridge, not for the lamp. For us, it's in that bridge, only that one. So when I buy the bridge, I buy the kit, usually I got the bridge plus three lamps. And if I want to access the bridge, I need to set up a username and on the bridge. To do that, basically, I need to click on the button on the bridge, send a particular post request with my username, it gets accepted, and from that moment on, I can use the username. So that's a specific procedure described in documentation. Basically, it requires that you own the bridge. So, for example, you cannot send, set a new username for you now because the bridge is there and you cannot click on the button. <laughs> okay. It's very, very basic authentication. Okay, let's put here a comment in the username for accessing the bridge. Okay. Then, now that we have these two things, let's go back to our um, first get and the um, yes? The name is already in the URL down there. Yeah, I, I'm going to remove it. But it's different from the username. Oh, sorry, thank you. Otherwise, it won't work. Yeah, it's this. Thank you very much. Um, okay, then. Let's prepare the URL for asking all lights, which is the same as before. But now we, we store it in the two variable. Lamps. So lights URL. In this case will be, let's say, base URL plus API plus username plus, um, oh, I can use single quotes or bytes. Let's use single quotes, it's the same. But just to be coherent to the, to the above. Uh, so. um, it was lights. The same URL as before, just programmatically composed. Then, let's get again the lights. Lights, press send, in this case, URL equal to lights URL. Okay, easier. But now, instead of printing, we take the dictionary and we use the dictionary for iterating over lights and sending commands. Okay, so let me delete this. Let's write here, uh, get all 
available lights. Then, four, we want to iterate over dictionary. So let's, let's define the single item as a light, since they are a collection of lights. So for light in all lights, okay? With this light, what we want to do is to set up the state of the lamp to on equal to true and color loop equal to, uh, sorry, effect equal to color loop because we want to turn it on, okay? So we need to prepare the URL for that. How can we prepare the URL? We can get the lights URL, the collection URL, plus the idea of the light that you remember was the, the idea of the entry was zero, one, two, and so on. Let's, let's go back to that. You see here, two, idea of the lamp. So if I want to access the second lamp, I just need to type lights slash two, if we remember the rest paradigm, okay? Then, once I get these two, what I want to do is to access the part of the resource which I want to change, which is the state. So it will be slash two slash state. And this is the URL. And the body is on colon true effect color, uh, effect uh, colon color loop. Okay, so the body of the request will be the new value for that particular resource, which is the state of the lamp. Okay, so let's compose the URL. The lamp URL, we said that, that it's composed by the lights URL. So uh, let's call it URL or um, let's call it good. I'm, I'm just changing the, the name uh, to avoid collision with the lights URL uh, I've already used. Okay, so your call will be lights URL. Okay, <coughs> plus the ID of the lamp, which is light. Okay, so that this will be plus light. Okay. Plus is another way for doing string concatenation, not, not the best actually. Then we want to change the state resource of this lamp. So this will be slash state, okay? Body, body of the request to be sent to the lamp. We said on true effect color loop. So the body will be, uh, let's also comment here the how the rest body, body, okay, body will be We could type it either as a string or as a dictionary as we want. Let's type it as a string. Okay. It depends on the, the send method we wrote, which actually accepts both a string and a dictionary. I, I think it's a string more than a dictionary. Maybe I was wrong before. But anyway, you can check it on the documentation. So. On parameter, this should be true. True, it's a Boolean value, it's not a string value, so just pretend it like this. Then we want to set the effect parameter. Let, let me check back uh, if it's effect, okay? It's a string. So effect in between quotes. And this would be color loop. Okay. 
That's it. Well, now that we have the body and the URL to call, what we need to do is to send a request. But in this case, it will be no more a get request because we want to change the status of an existing resource. So it will not be a post because post is for, for creating a new resource. It will be a put, that means updating a resource. So we update the state. That's why we use put. So for sending the request, we just need to type <coughs> rest.send. Now we need to specify everything. So first parameter, put, no more get. Second, URL to call. We got it. Third, data, which is the body. Okay. The last parameter were, was containing the headers, you remember. Now, what's the content we are going to send to the bridge? This is a JSON content. So we need to declare to the bridge that we are going to send this kind of content. We need to encode inside the, the message, okay, pay attention, the body of the message is JSON. To do that, we need to specify an header, which is content type, is defined in the HTTP protocol definition. So let's specify it using a dictionary in which we type here the name of the header, which is content type. Okay, this is case sensitive, must be written in this exact case. Okay, otherwise it, don't, it doesn't work. And also the value, okay, let me, where, where I am? Okay, also the value should be uh, according to the HTTP protocol specification, and in this case will be application slash JSON. Okay, that means the body is JSON. Nothing more. Okay. And that's it. Yes? Yes. It depends on the language. Some, some languages, which are basically application dependent, uh, start with application, some other with other, pre uh, first, the first part is different actually, so it might be XML, uh, XML I think it's just XML, HTML is just HTML, then there are some custom content types which are defined like X dash application slash whatever and so on. These are list listed in, uh, in the HTTP protocol specification. So if you look for HTTP protocol content types, you get three pages list of content types. Okay? JSON is this one. <laughs> if you look for JSON, there will be just one or two entries, basically. So the idea is that if you need to specify the content, and that's the case because usually the, if you don't specify the content, the content is HTML first, and secondly, XML. Is a second, in a second choice, but in this case, the, the bridge is set up for only ac accepting uh, requests, put requests with JSON content. So you need to be very specific and say, okay, this is a JSON content, otherwise you get an error back. Okay, so if we just stop here now, um, what we should obtain is to get the lamp Turn it on with a color loop forever. Because we just turn, turn on the lamp and nothing else. All the lamps, even included our lamp. So let, let's try it. Maybe we have some errors, I don't know. Okay, not found, interesting. Not found means that something in the URL probably is broken, okay? We sent the request, 
we get a response for the bridge which says, sorry, nothing inside. So let's print here the URL. Did I say it? Let me check. Okay. You see, I put here print, nothing changed. So what's, where do, what's the error? In the other request. So let's type this. Double slash. Okay. So, for example, I can remove the slash here. Okay. Just debugging. Okay. So we get. You see here. I just printed here all the all the lights. You see lights one, lights three, lights two. Okay. The order doesn't matter, but actually we are sending a request to these three different lamps, which of which only one is connected, which is this one. Okay, and now the lamps will stay uh, doing uh, the color loop forever because we we didn't say to the lamp, okay, now stop or stop after 10 seconds. So let's write the second part that basically stops the lamp and turns off the lamp. Okay, so we want to wait for a bit let's say 20 seconds, and then shut down all the lamps. To wait for a while, there are many ways for doing that, but actually there is one function, which is sleep, that tells to the program, okay, now sleep, for a given amount of seconds. And the, the function sleep is inside the module uh, time. So we need to import a time module. Okay, and here, after having uh, lighten up all the lamps, we need to wait. How can we tell that 20 seconds have passed or not? Okay, we just wait, or we can set up something on uh, printing, printed on the console so that we can make a countdown, 20, 19, 18, and so on and so on until uh, it comes to zero. Just to, to get a feedback that it's working. So let, let's set up the countdown. So we can say for i in, oops, sorry, for what I did. Okay, for i in range of Twenty uh, zero to twenty, okay. So twenty times. Range from zero to twenty generates an array with numbers inside going from one from zero to twenty in this case, okay. And then I iterates over this array, over over this sequence. So I assumes all the value between zero and twenty. Uh, then for each turn, we just sleep for one second, okay, and print the countdown. So print 20, uh, 20 minus i, okay. So this is just, let, let's say, let's write here, Wait for 20 seconds, okay? Then, what do we need to do? Yes? Uh, why do we put the lamps and inside the full block? Because I want to turn on all the lamps. Oh, okay. So I iterate over all available lamps, and for each lamp I send the request, turn on. So that's why it's at the four, because these four Basically, iterate, so 
over all entries of the lights collection. And for each entry, sends a non command. Okay? So now we should do the same, same for, but change, we should change the command and turn the lamp off. That means, what do you think? What do you think we need to put inside the body? Okay, I'm, I'm just starting to copy the, the loop part. Okay. Let's type here, turn all the lamps off. Okay, so what should I put in the body? False. Do I care about the effect? No. Okay. Okay, let's try another time. Come down, okay. 20 seconds are really long if you're waiting. <laughs> okay, now let's cross the finger. If everything works, I should get, on, get off the lamp. Yep. Okay. So now we learn how to control a U lamp from Python with few lines. Okay, because we, we built a module for sending the REST request. This can be reused for whatever. So if you want to control the music server, you can use the same module. Just change the endpoint and the command and the body you want to send. That's why we, we choose to write this very general method to reuse the method, whatever we need it. We still have time for, uh, for the second part, very quick. Okay, uh, instead of just writing from scratch, let, let's have a look at the solution so that we can be quicker, maybe finish uh, five minutes earlier and uh, have a look uh, at the solution you have. So let me take the code you have on GitHub, which is this one. So the second step for today would be to take this instruction we built and start defining a class around the U bridge, describing the U bridge and providing access to the functions of the bridge. So up to now, we just wrote scripts for controlling the bridge, okay? Sending on and off, basically. But what if we want to uh, address the, the bridge representation in a more structured way so that we can create a U bridge instance, give it the URL, and then uh, type something like U, dot set all, light, all lights on, and then it takes care of, and so on. What we need to, to prepare is a class, oh, which is this one. You have it on, uh, on GitHub. So if I want to model the bridge and its functions, I can use a class. And with the really poor fantasy, I call the class uBridge. So that we know that actually the object models the bridge. Here we can see a little bit the class in more detail. You already have uh, found classes inside the, 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 the REST service, uh, the, the REST server solution. So you should know what a class is, but just to recall the structure of a class, this init method is the initial one, which is called when the class is created. When we type uh, uBridge, open parentheses, close parentheses, this init method gets called and prepares all the variables of the internal variables of the class. So for example, in this case, we want to build the bridge by giving the URL. So build a new U bridge class representing the bridge, the physical bridge located at that URL, okay? And what, it, what does the class? First, gets the URL, checks, if the URL ends with a slash, if it ends with a slash, cuts out the last slash for composing better the, the URL afterwards. So here you see remove training slashes, basically checks URL in position minus one means the last character of URL, and if the last character is a slash, then take the substring. 
between zero and the last character and store it. Where? In the internal variable named URL. After storing the URL, build the lights collection URL. That basically is the URL of the bridge plus lights. Okay, that's it. After these three instructions, the, the class is ready and it has the information needed for operating. What can we do with the, with the class? Okay, the same we did till now. Let's get all the lights connected to the bridge. Then, in a class fashion, it will, do, will become ubridge dot get all lights, for example. Without any parameters, because we already said where the bridge is. So you see here, the only parameter is self, and in a class definition, every function should have self as a first parameter, so that's it. That means no parameters, basically. And what the get all lights function does, basically calls the rest um, module and sends a get request to the bridge. So rest.send URL self.lights URL, the one we composed, headers. In this case, we are very precise and say, okay, if you remember before we weren't, we weren't sending any, any headers, in this case we are telling to the bridge, okay, we are going to accept only JSON. So that's a different header, which is accept, and we are telling application JSON, okay? So today we learned two different headers. Content type, what's inside the message, accept what, what we can accept back. So the bridge won't try to send back uh, an HTML page, for example. Okay. Second method, set you, set the color of the lamp. What we need to to set the U of a lamp? The lamp ID, for which we want to set the U, and the U value. Quite, quite straightforward. So, um, given the light ID, we can build the URL, as we did before, okay? So the URL will be the base URL slash light ID, and actually it is this one, URL to call self lights URL plus slash plus light ID. This basically casts the ID to a string so that if even if we provide uh, one as a number, it will be translated into one as a string. Then, since we want to change the state of the lamp, we add state to, to, see, to say we want to change, we want to update the state or resource of the lamp uh, with a given ID. And then to set the U on true, because we want to turn on the lamp, otherwise we don't see any change on the U, and the U value. You see here, U, this is a placeholder for a number, okay? And this last person U specify the variable to be used for replacing the placeholder, okay? So basically, it takes the value of the U variable and put it inside the string, okay? And then send the put request as before. So quite simple. Also in this case, the content type of the request would be application JSON. Okay, and that's it. And this is uh, the very baseline, and then you can work on it and extend it, adding functions to cover all the functions of the bridge. This is just the initial part. With these two functions, we can get all the lights and set a U, but we can do more. For example, write a, a method for turning the lamp on and off. So you bridge dot set, uh, set on, for example, or set off given the light ID. Okay, and what if we want to test this API? Then I guess we should stop because it's seven o'clock if I'm not wrong. Okay, now let's keep uh, the first part and then I will explain it. 
We want to create a bridge to connect to. Okay, bridge, you bridge the address of the bridge. That will be the IP address plus API plus the username, okay? Then, in this case, I already know that the LAMP ID is two, so I just said the ID, LAMP ID equal to two, you see your number, that's why inside the class I wrote str ID so that I can convert the number to the string. Okay, this comment is wrong. Then here, in this script, I just set up a loop that basically asks for a U value, and if I type exit, and sub the script, otherwise sets a U value. This is exactly the same script we did in one of the first labs, so don't need to be explained. Let's go down. Here, requested U, takes the string I type on the, on the console and converts it into an integer, okay? Then, somewhat computes the U to send, then we are going to see how, and to send a U, bridge, set U, lamp ID, U value. Really, really easy. So by wrapping up uh, the function that we need to call for, set, for controlling the bridge, we can get a really short, a really easy to use API in Python. Okay, so let's see this compute u. This basically scales the value we give in between the accepted values. The maximum value for the u, this is uh, specified in the API specification. So if you go to the API documentation page and look at it, they will be okay, you can change the u value between this and this. This means red, this means green. So in this case, red is 655,000 and so on and so on, and green is uh, 25,000 and 500. Okay, this is the range. What does the f this function is? Get the maximum value, so I want to give the U in a with a value between zero and 100, for example. The actual value will be 20, and the function scales this 20 over 100 into the right value in the range between 25,000 and 500 and 65,000 and so on. So basically, checks the max value, the maximum acceptable value, if it's greater than zero, because otherwise we cannot do anything. Computes the ratio, okay? So value over max value, which can be, which is the minimum, you see here, this function mean, minimum between one and the ratio. That means that if you provide 300 as a value and 255 as a maximum value, the result will be always one. We start to write. And in the hand computes the value of the, the actual value of the U to use, which is the floor level, green, plus the delta between the green and the red multiplied by the ratio. So this is just conversion. In our case, if we go back to the function, we set compute u, requested u, 255. So I'm, I'm telling to the function, okay, the maximum for me will be 255 and I will give you values between zero and 255. So if I just execute this, I get this instant number between zero and 255, and if I put here, for example, 50, you got it? If I put 255, I'm expecting to get a red light. Red. So you, you see the U changes the color somewhat. And if I put zero, the light is green. You see in this case, the, the U is green, but the, the saturation is really high, so the actual color of the light is nearly white, okay? So by, by changing the saturation, we can lower a little bit the brightness of the lamp and get a, a more green color, okay? Okay, that's it. Um, and if you have any question, either now or uh, on Monday or on Thursday as you want.